Good morning. Good morning. We welcome you all to worship this morning in the name of our loving Father. A very special welcome to friends and guests. We're so glad you joined us today. And we pray you have a worshipful time with us. Uh, good for you for getting the clocks turned back. Uh, today, your Operation Christmas Child shoe boxes are due. Um, if you forgot to bring them today, you can drop them off tomorrow. Just we'll leave them at the top of the ramp. Um, and we'll get them inside. After worship, worship and music committee will meet briefly. Thank you to everyone who purchased carnations um, in memory of loved ones. Um, I do have a quick word in the back that I will set out at the end of the worship service. Um, so if you don't remember how many you got, uh, you can look at it and then mark your name and your pictures up, please. Uh, and uh, orders for your poinsettias, since we're talking about flowers, are due next Sunday, November the 14th. Um, we started practicing the Christmas, the children's Christmas program this morning. Yay! Um, and already we're doing a good job. So, uh, very important for those of you whose children are in the children's Christmas program, they need to be here every Sunday. We have five more practices until the Christmas program. I know, right? Um, Bible study continues. We have two more sessions of this particular Bible study, and then we'll begin the Advent Bible study in three weeks, also on Wednesday. This coming Thursday, uh, blessings to all of our veterans. Thank you for all you have done. It's also our church council meeting at 7. Um, Pam Frederick is still collecting uh, clean gallon jugs. Uh, if you bring them here, we will get them to Camp Frederick. Okay, on our prayer concerns, we are, of course, remembering today all of the saints of God that have gone home in this past year, which has been a lot. <laughs> um, we've also added George, Valerie, Seth, and Nathan Bowden. They all have COVID. Um, they're getting better. They are all on the mend. Uh, John Cruder and Mary Ann Dixon, also the family and friends of Marty Orr, uh, Kara Les Lescabeck, and Brenda Horn Hornknot. Brenda. Um, do we have any other announcements this morning? We begin our worship with meditation and with prayer.
flyer, the, the Prima Praise is printed on the back side of that. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have not done. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. With the precious blood of Jesus Christ flowing red for all from Calvary to set your people free. We give you thanks, O Lord. For all who have come out of great tribulation, whose robes have been washed and made white in the blood of the Lamb. We give you thanks, O Lord. For the promise that our sins, though scarlet, shall be white as snow. We give you thanks, O Lord, for washing all of our sins away, that we might serve you in unblemished purity. We give you thanks, O Lord, for the hope of everlasting life, toward which we lift our eyes, for heaven opened wide as Jesus ever opened arms. We give you thanks, O Lord, for your Holy Spirit who keeps us faithful, until with all your saints we sing your praise in everlasting joy. We give you thanks, O Lord. Our hymn of praise is hymn 176 in your dream of Deborah Wintering, 
Hank McClish, Francis Exon, Betty Whistler, Kathleen Wilson, Dallas Stacy, Oscar Davidson, Tony Scott, Ursula Lewis, Robert Penn, Sarah Perkershman, Frank Gibson, Harold Brubaker, Mike McLaughlin, Scott Wickersham, Matthew Bacha, Pauline Stratton, Timothy Meehan, Dave Liston, Kaden Davis, Anthony Smith, Sister Lynn Frederick, Reverend Lou Reagan, Reverend Donald Pence, Brenda Slayball, Deb Haley, Robert Berkey, Kim Russell, Mike Williams, Barb McCarns, Jan Morgan, Walt Kaiser, Jim Harsha, Jeffrey Leffler, Arlen Crawford, Buck Van Fossil, Patrick Bobby, Bonnie Hicks, Larry Dixon, Cecil Conkle, Mark Simcox, Min Babel, Babel, Jim Feast, Vi Chellis, Ben McCormick, Ernie Ford, Helen McCoy, Joe Booker, Bob Huffnail, Dorothy Stelz, John Kernan, Marcella Keller, Mary Jane Morrow, Marty Orr. The Lord be with you.
please come forward.
the Lord has spoken. In that day they will say, Surely, this is our God. We trusted in God, and we were saved. This is the Lord. We trusted in Him. Let us rejoice and be glad in His salvation. We read responsibly from Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who dwell therein. For the Lord is founded upon seas and established it upon the rivers. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in God's holy place? Those of innocent hands and purity of heart, who do not swear on God's being, nor do they pledge what is false. They shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of their salvation. Such is this generation of those who seek you, O Lord of those who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O everlasting rivers, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O leper, past indoors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? Truly the Lord of hosts is the King of glory. The second lesson is from Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 through 6. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with all people. God will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. The Lord will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. The one who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Please rise for the last
made up the 18 dozen carnations and 54 candles representing the losses of members of our family, losses that members of our family have experienced. The reality really hit. It's been a tough year. The death of loved ones, expected, unexpected, tragic, a blessing, have left a mark on many hearts. Do you think with death is never easy? And the losses of those we love hurts. And we should cry. However, we, the children of God, know that our sadness is temporary because we know death does not have the final word. We know that even in the midst of sadness, we are blessed with hope. The readings for this All Saints Day are all messages of hope. They remind us that even though God's saints may be separated from one another for a time by death, we will ultimately be together in God's kingdom for eternity. That is the hope that we proclaim and celebrate today. Today's lessons all anticipate the final realization of God's kingdom when all the saints will be together. Isaiah describes the great feast which will occur, that, fight, that great family celebration when God has gathered all of his children, like Thanksgiving, only better. Psalm 24 is a psalm of ascent, a song sung by pilgrims to Jerusalem as they journeyed up Mount Zion to the temple, preparing themselves to sing praise to the Lord, the King of glory. Revelation describes a vision of the new Jerusalem which will be realized when Christ returns, a place where there will be no more tears, no mourning, no crying, no pain, no death. In the new Jerusalem, God will live among the people, and all things will be made new. The gospel is the raising of Lazarus, and it anticipates Jesus' resurrection, God's final, total, complete victory over death. These readings are full of visions of hope and promise and glory, things that we can cling to as we live out our lives, doing whatever it is God has for us to do while we are here on earth, all the while looking forward to the day when we are united with God and reunited with each other in eternity. All Saints Day is ultimately a day of hope. And hope is necessary to our, to our survival during our lives. Hope is what keeps us going. We all know people who have no hope and have experienced the pain and emptiness which fills the lives of those people and sometimes leads them to death. We may have personally been in situations that felt hopeless and have felt the despair that can be overwhelming in those situations. I cannot begin to imagine the anguish that comes from not being able to find hope in the promises of God, even when I have been with people who don't have that hope. And I cannot truthfully say I understand how you feel because I don't. I know the truth of the gospel. I have the hope of eternity. And in those times of pain and trial and sadness, I do everything I can to convey that word of hope to those who so desperately need to hear it. We all know people who don't know the joy of being a child of God. People who don't know the comfort that comes from being able to put absolute faith in the love of the Heavenly Father. People who are afraid to commit their lives to God because they don't want to lose control. People who are hurting, people who are frightened, people who are searching for anything to fill that emptiness inside that only God can fill. People who need God. Jesus came to give us that hope, and we see it in the Gospel lesson. Jesus had come to the funeral of his friend Lazarus. Now in the verses just before this lesson we read today, Jesus had been asked to come to the house of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus because Lazarus was ill, and the family wanted Jesus to heal him. Jesus did not leave immediately, and in the meantime, Lazarus had died and had been in the tomb for four days. In our lesson, Mary had come to Jesus, and in light of the fact that Jesus could have healed her brother, her words sound like an accusation. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Now in verse 21, Martha had also met Jesus and said the exact same words. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know, he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. 
Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she told him. I believe you are the Christ, the Son of God, who was come into the world. Martha, even though she was mourning the loss of her brother, had hope in the promise of eternal life, spoken to her by the Son of God. Mary, on the other hand, had no hope. The Greek word which describes Mary's weeping and the weeping of the crowds refers to an anguished wailing, a crying out loud. It doesn't refer so much to sorrow, but to the physical or mental pain which is outwardly visible. It is that totally abandoned, hysterical weeping that comes from horrible loss and the absence of hope. Now, if anyone has experienced this kind of despair and uncontrollable sobbing, or has been someone who was crying this way, you know what I'm talking about. And it's scary. The word used for Jesus' weeping is a different word. It's a word that, which refers to the sound people make when they're missed. Jesus was not breath at the death of his friend. He was upset at the lack of faith in Mary and the other Jews. Jesus had come to the grave of his friend to give the people life, and they were all bogged down in death. Even Martha, who just a few verses earlier had stated that Jesus was the Messiah and that she trusted him, Martha, Martha, ever practical, was the one who told Jesus not to open the tomb because it would smell bad. Jesus prayed to his heavenly father not to give Lazarus back his life. Jesus' prayer is that the people would hear Jesus and believe he was the son of God. And then Jesus commanded, commanded Lazarus to come out of the tomb, and he did, wrapped in his grave claws. How many people do you think took off running? <laughs> Jesus came to give us a glimpse of the glory of our heavenly to free us from the bonds of sin and even the bonds of death, which Jesus demonstrated literally when he directed the people to unwrap Lazarus, freeing him from the bondage of his grave claws and let him go. And we talked about this last week, how we are all in bondage to sin, and we admit it during the brief order for confession and forgiveness, and we will all physically die as a result of our sin. Romans 6.28 for the wages of sin is death. Good or bad, young or old, faithful or not, we will all die. And that would be a very depressing reality if, it's a big if, if death had the final word. But the second half of the verse from Romans, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. What Jesus has done for us is to change what death means for those of us who believe in him. Instead of the end of life, death has become for us the gateway to eternity. When we leave behind the brokenness of our earthly lives and move into the joy of everlasting glory, rejoicing with all the saints triumphant and celebrating Jesus' victory, even over the power of death. All Saints Day, then, is not a day of sadness as we contemplate the loss of people we love. It's a day to rejoice that as the children of God, we are all saints, and the time is coming when the new Jerusalem will be established and we will all be united with God and with each other for all eternity. The flowers and the candle flames are not so much a remembrance of people who are gone. Instead, they are a visible reminder of the saints who are present with us sharing communion with us this day as we anticipate God's great feast when the kingdom of God is fully realized. It is truly a day of celebration, a day to remember the love God has for us, the joy that comes from knowing death is not the last word, the hope that comes from the promises of God. We are the saints of God. Rejoice and be glad. Amen. We sing together hymn 343 in your green hymn.
Those of you who are joining us from home, the body of Christ is broken for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you. Now come for all is ready and all are well.
Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen.